A case that is the worst mass murder in Tennessee history includes the death of eight, many of which that came from the same family. Hello, good morning. It is Monday morning. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy. If you are a return visitor, then welcome back. Um, my name is Sean. And I'm here to uh, tell you a little bit about some murders. Uh, true crime, mainly. Sometimes I do some myths and mysteries. But mainly I stick with the true crime. Um, sometimes it's a slow go, but I, who knows, you know. <clears throat> I have been delving recently into uh, more current cases like this one, uh, considering the person was just sentenced last month. Um, I will go back to a lot of Midwest ones like I had been doing. I don't really follow the mainstream mass murderers, so you're not going to see Ted Bundy or Ed Gein, things like that. Um, the main reason is because they're overdone. They're extremely overdone. I am here to tell you about lesser ones that you don't know about, but I'm trying to do some current ones that maybe you've never heard of because I, I didn't hear about this one. So let us begin. Located in the northern Sumner County, Westmoreland, Tennessee, sits in the Rolling Hills. It's a sleepy little town of around 2,000 people. It's a quiet country setting with its biggest claim to fame being the L&N Railroad Tunnel. It's believed that it's the tiniest little railroad tunnel in the world. Um, I think this is going to take a back seat to uh, the new thing it's going to be known for, which is the worst mass murder in Tennessee's history. Um, the bodies of which were found on April 17th and April 27th of 2019. And the suspect was... Uh, identified as Michael Lee Cummings. On April 27, 2019, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, or TBI, went to 1177 Charles Brown Road. I screwed up and looked for Charlie Brown Road, and coincidentally, there is a Charlie Brown Road. Um, they responded to Charles Brown Road to a 911 call and discovered four bodies and a woman who was alive, but she had some serious injuries and she was taken to the hospital in critical condition. A short time later, another body was located on Luby Road or Luby Brown Road, sorry. Uh, the victim's car was missing, so they put out an APB for that vehicle. Um, this ended a few hours later when they located a person of interest, 25-year-old Michael Cummings, hiding in a creek. During his arrest, guns were drawn and he was shot in the leg. The next day, on April 28th, TBI located two more bodies in the Charles Brown Road house. Uh, all in all, they located seven deceased and one live victim that was in critical condition. <clears throat> Excuse me. The victims at the Charles Brown Road were David and Clara Cummings, ages 51 and, 50, or and 44. Uh, these were Michael's parents. 45-year-old Charles Wholesale, who was his uncle, uh, 
the Charles's girlfriend, who was 43-year-old Rachel McLaughlin P., and her 12-year-old daughter, Sapphire. Um, Rachel's mother, who was 64, was the last victim in the residence, and her name was Marsha Knuckles. Um, Mary Wholesale was the grandmother to the suspect, and she was the one in critical condition. At the Luby Road, Luby, Br Luby Brown Road, the victim was 67-year-old Sher or Shirley Farrell. Farrell, I think I, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, all of the victims' deaths were caused by blunt force and sharp force traumas, mainly to the head. The TBI advised that it seemed like the victims had at least been dead for a day prior to being found. The suspect, Michael Cummings, had been sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2017 for setting a fire to a neighbor's house and aggravated assault to this neighbor. But on July 19, 2018, Circuit Judge D. David Gay, and remember that name because we'll get back to Judge Gay, uh, he thought that uh, Cummings would make a good candidate for probation and released him from the prison to serve 10 years on probation. Please note that when he was arrested in 2017, he stated to the police that when he got out, he would go finish this job. Uh, of course, the victim from that arson is not anyone that was involved in the murders. So the Monday after the murders, a violation of probation order was sent to Judge Gay to sign. This was his first violation since released from prison. Though Cummings had failed to comply with a mental health evaluation, a warrant had been, prepare, been prepared on April 26th, so the Friday right before um, he committed these crimes. And they were, they were planning on serving it on Monday morning to him and arresting him for violating this order of seeking, Mikey, seeking mental health therapy. Um, I guess too little too late. Uh, they should have just not wanted to cut early for the weekend and just dealt with him. But considering that the bodies were at least there for a day, he might have already had killed them before they wrote up that war uh, the, the warrant. On May 3rd, of 2019, District Attorney Ray Whitley stated that Cummings was still in serious condition and that he would not be formally charged until the following Monday. Uh, the Chief Medical Examiner for Nashville, Dr. Fang Li, said that this was one of the worst cases he had ever seen. He stated to News 2 out of uh, Nashville, I believe, that all victims had skull fat fractures and bleeding on the brain. Uh, the victims also had some sharp force trauma, which caused a lot of blood on their body and uh, location. Finally, on March 10th of 2019, uh, a Friday, Cummings was released from the hospital, and then he was booked into Sumner County Jail. They booked him on eight counts of murder. Yes, eight. I know what you're probably thinking, wondering how seven makes eight. The grandmother was still alive, but the first body was located in a burnt cabin on Ransom Mandrill Road on April 17th. This person's head was found about 25 yards from his body. 
authorities learned that his name was Jim Dunn, and they learned this at a later date. His body was bludgeoned to death, too. Of course, that didn't make much sense because he was beheaded, so wouldn't that have been to death? Uh, they linked Cummings with Daniels or with Dunn because Dunn's rifle was found at the Cummings family home. Uh, so Cummings was booked on eight charges of murder, and his grandmother was still clinging to life. Um, on July 3rd, 2019, Dr. Lee released the full autopsy reports of the victims. But this didn't include Dunn's report. Um, <clears throat> he released it with a map of the home when released on where the bodies were located. When you entered into the house, well, trailer, uh, there was a bedroom to the right and a living room to the left. In the bedroom is where they found Mary, who was still in the hospital. And they also located Rachel and Charles. In the living room was Marsha and Sapphire, and they were found that way. Cummings' parents, David and Clara, were located in the other bedroom. But like I previously said, they weren't located until the following day. And at first I was thinking, why was it the following day? And apparently the way the crime scene technicians process the scene, they enter the location and start and work their way out until they hit every spot. Um, and there was so much evidence to process in the front two rooms that it took them that long to get to the back area where Cummings' parents were. Um, where which brings up so many questions for me because you would have thought that the first officers there would have cleared the house to make sure Cummings wasn't hiding in one of those other rooms. But I don't know. Maybe they have different procedures. Um, I, I have no idea. The reports went in with, to more detail about the wounds but it mainly consisted of skull fractures, blunt force trauma, sharp force trauma, abrasions, and fr fractures. I just really don't want to get into each of the victims. If you really want to look it up, you can find it online. But I'm not glorifying their deaths by repeating everything that happened to each person. Um... So in August of 2019, Cummings pled guilty to the 12 charges he was facing. Oh, sorry. Let me rephrase that. He pled not guilty to the 12 charges he was facing. In September of 2020, delays were caused because of a virus that was going around with a 19 at the end. And from what I can tell, you're not supposed to say that word on YouTube anymore because you can get demonetized. So I can't say the C word. Um, so I'm not going to. But it was a virus that shut down the world in 2020. Uh, so a new trial date was finally scheduled for April 20th of 2022. I don't know why they waited a whole year to get back on track, but... And the state was planning to seek death. Now, in April of 2021, they met for a pretrial and recorded a dispos disposition from the key witness, Mary Hosale. They did this because of her age. And uh, coincidentally, she did pass away prior to the main trial. Initially, after getting out of the hospital, she had no recollection of the murders. But since it had been a while, uh, she became the star witness as she had first-hand account. So she recorded what she could, answering questions as she could for that. 
In April of 2022, they postponed the trial for another year till 2023 of April. So then in January of 2023, so this last January, Cummings appeared in court for two reasons. One, to attempt to dismiss the entire district attorney office since the lead prosecutor, Eric Malden, and uh, had previous had previously represented Cummings. So he felt this was a conflict of interest. The judge denied the motion. Um, the other item was Cummings' mental state and whether he was really competent enough to be executed. At the second hearing in January, the judge, D. Gay, ruled against the defense allowing the prosecution to seek the death penalty. And, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering what the judge is thinking, sitting there going, well, I released him to probation, and here he is after he killed eight people. You know, that, that can't be set well with Judge Gay. So the trial was postponed again, and the judge placed a gag order on it. It got a little muddy here. Um, and it made it really difficult for me to figure it out at first, but a lot of research and a lot of reading and a lot of piecing things together. In April of 2023, the trial was again postponed. They postponed it to, till January of 2024 because of new evidence that was revealed. But then on August 16th of 2023, he took a plea agreement and pled guilty to all 12 charges to get the death, death penalty thrown off the table. Uh, he would inse instead serve eight life sentences. He pled guilty to attempted first degree murder of his grandmother and to theft also. Uh, the reason it was getting all muddy there is because the last thing I saw was that it's postponed till January of 2024. And then he was convicted in August and I, I could not find any correlation of how, you know, with the plea agreement, I, I, it took a while before I could actually find that plea agreement. And I don't know why it was so difficult for me, but Judge Gay asked Cummings for each count if he was guilty and Cummings responded yes. And I mean, one of the examples was your mother was so-and-so was killed by you. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, I did that. I killed my mom. So, I mean, he asked that for each victim. Um, I found that the, this was a surprise agreement because Cummings had some brain scans and it showed significant problems in his brain. And the defense really could have uh, convinced the jury not to sentence to death. So they would have had to go through all the rigmarole again for a trial to do life in prison. Um, so that's the reason they did a plea agreement and got death off the off the uh, off off the table. Cummings' aunt Carlotta Meadows said that she will never understand why this happened, and she believes that he did not commit this crime alone. Uh, it, I mean, it was seriously a massive doing so I don't know how how he did it either uh, and maybe he did do this he did have accomplice I don't know it's a sad case that ruined many lives you know it's true that Cummings has brain issues but we'll never know the effect that it had on his behavior in the way of committing these horrendous crimes. I mean, is that to blame or there's a lot of people with brain injuries and brain damage that don't commit murders. 
So I guess we'll never really know. Um, the one interesting fact that I found is they weren't certain what he used as the weapon to kill everyone. They think it was either an axe or like a sharp pole or something, but they're not 100% positive on what the weapon was. He was found with an axe, so they're assuming that was the axe, but I couldn't find anything about them testing it for blood or anything. You know, I guess the whole thing with this is we just need to remember the victims, the wife, the husband, the brother, the sister, the mother, the daughter, the grandmother, and two neighbors. Nine victims, but eight deaths that shook this town, the state, and even the country. You never know what's going through people's heads. And I've said that all my life. You don't know if that person that cut you off, that you flipped off, is going to turn around and plow into you. Or that waitress that you don't tip well enough is going to snap. Or... Who or what, you know? Look at all the different things that happen in work environments or schools or anywhere. And I'm not even talking about some of the freaks out there that just want to hurt others because they don't like their religion or their race or anything like that. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about normal, average, everyday Joes that snap. It's sad. And I've said it for a long time, and I think I've said it in other uh, episodes, that America's got a problem when dealing with mental health. And they don't take it as serious as they should. And that's really sad. Because there's a lot of people out there suffering. I'm suffering, you know. I, I, I've got mental problems. I think we all do. Whether it's depression or bipolar or anxiety or hyperactivity, fetal alcohol syndrome or schizophrenia. You know, that's not our faults. That's not anyone's fault. Well, I guess fetal alcohol would be the mother's fault that drank with the baby in there, in her tummy. But the rest of it's not our fault. And I don't know. There just has to be better treatment out there for people with mental illness. So. I've ranted long enough. I, I do apologize. Sorry to make this long again. But mental illness is a big topic and something that I really think people need to understand more. And if you don't understand it, figure it out. Learn about it read about it. And if you're suffering from anxiety or depression or any of these things, you know, know that people out there believe in you and worry for you and are there for you. So just because you think that the people right there next to you don't care, doesn't mean other people don't care. That didn't make sense, but I hope you know what I meant. Reach out to people that might care. Find social groups. Find other people out there. And somebody's going to care. Somebody's going to know what you're going through and help you out. 
So I have droned on for way too long now on this subject, and I do apologize. Um, please stay tuned for my next show next week. I'm going to make it topical again. And then I'll probably go back to some older cases. Got a couple old ones that I want to do. So I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty full throughout a September. I might take a break one week in October, but other than that, stay tuned. Be good to each other. Be good to yourself. Love you. And just have the best day you can. See you next time. Thank you.